We gave one of these away recently, but now it's time for us to take a look at the awesome Furiby Dark Max 220. This is part one, enjoy the review. So we gave one of these away some weeks ago and kind of regretting it now because <laughs> I want to. I'm only joking. We will be giving away lots more drones like this actually in the very near future. So click that subscribe button now to be part of those giveaways. Let's have a look at what we get inside. So first of all, we've got some really good quality propellers here. These are Gem Fan Props. They are 5152 three-bladed props and they're really, really nice, particularly because they've got winglets on the design. We'll have a look at those in a minute. But you get two sets of those. One obviously has to go on the quad. The other is the spare. That's quite nice. Then we've got the quad. And there it is. Wow, what a lovely feeling quad already. It feels good quality and I've not even looked closely at it, but we will do in a minute. We'll just quickly see what else is in the box. So we've got an instruction manual with some details about the receiver, a flight controller, the camera, and some other parts of the hardware here. And then we've got a little bag of goodies in there. We've got a battery strap. We've got what looks to be a camera programming cable a set of screws, which are probably for the standoffs, a small spanner for tightening up the prop nuts, and then finally a dipole antenna. Now it's quite unusual actually to see a dipole antenna on a racing quad like this, so we probably won't use that. Instead, we'll probably attach a better quality antenna, although we will give it a go just to see if it outperforms our expectations. So that's what you get in the box, a nice package. Note, you don't get a battery. Not a major issue these days. We've all got a good set of batteries generally that we've used to fly our quads. We're interested in paying for the quality of the quad here, not for a bundled accessory. So talking of the quad, let's have a look at it in more detail now. Now the first thing you want to do is actually get the props fitted onto this beautiful looking quad. Do note that the props have an indent on one side, so make sure that you install the props with that indent facing upwards. Otherwise you might run into some issues with the props not actually being installed tightly on the base. So I'm going to put all of those on now. Also of course make sure you get the props on the right motors like that. So there we go, the props are all now fitted with the indents facing upwards. Now another interesting observation on these DYS motors actually is that the threads on the motors are not anti-clockwise and clockwise. They're all clockwise, which I find a bit strange and quite unusual. So just make sure that you tighten these nuts up nice and tightly, especially on the props which are spinning anti-clockwise to make sure that you don't end up losing a nut. So there we go, with the props fitted, we now get the full beauty of this quad. Now I love the Hollybro Coppice One, a beautiful 215 class quad. Really, really nice quad, but this is sexy. <laughs> you can also see why they call it the Dark Max. It is very, very black, but it looks lovely. Now we've got 3K 4 mil carbon fiber here. This really does feel like a rigid quad, beautifully designed. And I also like the fact that it's a very clean design as well and very simple. Maintenance on this quad and also repairs should certainly not be overly complex. The upper section is also very rigid. We've got two mil carbon fiber up there. Uh, it looks a bit vulnerable at first glance, but it's not. Very, very solid feeling stack, and that's really good. The only concern I've got immediately about the design of it is the camera lens. Now we've got this beautiful camera here, but you can see that there's no protection for that camera. It's just a shame that the carbon doesn't protrude a little bit more to protect that camera in case you were to hit a tree or something head on. But we'll see how we fare. The Coppice one had exactly the same design. And I have to say it hasn't posed an issue so far on that quad. So looking at these beautiful arms, we've got some braided cables, which is really nice for the speed controller and motor wires, running to these motors on the end, and these are DYS motors. And they are the SR2205 2550 kV motors. So nice fast spinning motors, much quicker than the average 2300 kV motors that we generally see on these five inch quads. They're obviously brushless motors, and actually looking closely at them, the motors say that they are the racer edition as well. They lead into a four-in-one BL Heli 
controller in the middle, which is a 30 amp system. That's an integrated board, and that's also integrated with the flight controller, which is an R Tower F4 Plus FC. That's got a built in OSD, it's also got built in switchable VTX with the 48 channels available, 25, 100, 200 milliwatt switchable as well. So, loads of options there in terms of power output. Also, on the side of the flight controller, here are three tiny little buttons. Now, the first little button there is to control the power of the VTX. The next one is to control the channel. And then the next one is a boot button. And it's nice to see that exposed rather than hidden away frustratingly inside or underneath the board. So nice and accessible, those buttons. The only element that's not actually integrated is the receiver. Now, I chose the FR Sky bundled version, and I've got a tiny little receiver that comes with it and a tiny little antenna attached to it. Not a diversity receiver, I note. And I really think that that's a, a bad match for this quad because it's a very capable quad, capable of some range and obviously some power. And to have that basic little receiver in there doesn't seem a good fit to me. I may swap that out eventually for an XM Plus or something similar to that. On the side of the flight controller stack, you can see we've got the USB port there as well. That's for programming beta flight. And attached to this VTX is also a beautiful camera. And I have to say, I think this is probably my favorite feature of this quad. Now, although the camera looks like a run cam, it's not. It's a Sony camera, it's a 960H, but it is a CCD camera, which is lovely. It's got a beautiful 2.5 mil lens on there, which gives us an FOV of 135. It's also programmable too, although the only problem with the camera is it's a bit of a pain to get to the back of it because of the way that this whole system is built around it, the carbon. So you are going to have to take apart or perhaps take the camera out actually in order to get access to that. On the rear we've got our little antenna connector and it's facing upwards unlike the Coppice One which is designed for you to be racing at a 60 degree angle constantly because of its downward antenna. This one's a regular fitment so this is going to suit more of the casual flyer less of the racer because we won't be flying at 60 degrees all the time. And then on the rear we've got four little LEDs which of course are going to be programmable via beta flight and what I'm really pleased to see is tucked away on the side here is also a buzzer. So this quad has all the features I expect quads to have these days. OSD, buzzer, LED strip and programmable elements throughout it. So really, really good specification there. On the rear, we've got an XT60 connector and on the underside, I've stuck the non-slip pad on there for the battery. And obviously we need to put our battery strap in there as well. But what a lovely clean underside. There is nothing here, no wires, no speed controllers. So nothing to get damaged on the underside there, which I'm pleased to see. The specification says it's got an integral camera mount. Now I could take my run cam, I guess, and strap it on here and use the uh, little bars here to put some straps around to keep it nice and secure. Um, it's not exactly an, a camera mount here, um, but there is a place for a strap around here. Um, so yeah, I guess you can strap that there. You could also put a run cam two on there perhaps, uh, and maybe even a, a larger GoPro because there are some little strap slots on either side here, um, but you don't get a strap with it for that. So you're gonna have to use one that came with the action camera. So that's about it really, a beautifully made quad and really, really impressive, clean design as well. Can't wait to get this one flight tested, but first thing we're gonna do is power it up, get it connected to our transmitter, and then we'll plug it into Betaflight to have a look at the configuration. We'll be binding this Darkmax to our Tyranis transmitter, and so the first step is to create a new model memory. Obviously, it's a quadcopter, and so we'll be using the model wizard to create the profile quickly, and then we'll give it a name as well. Next, we need to prepare the transmitter for binding. The FR Sky receiver that comes with the Darkmax is a D8 protocol, and so we're going to amend the binding setting from D16 to D8. Now onto the mixer tab where we'll set up three additional channels to use for arm, mode and also for buzzer and perhaps also on screen display. Select channel 5 and then select the source option and then toggle the switch on the transmitter that you want to use for that channel. Repeat this two more times for the other two channels, toggling the respective switches on the transmitter. Next, get the transmitter ready on the bind option but don't select it just yet. Now to get the receiver into bind mode, and the first critical thing to do is to attach the antenna. If you power up the quad without it attached, you risk blowing your VTX, which will of course then need replacing. 
We'll now bind the receiver to the transmitter and the receiver might need sliding out a bit from underneath the carbon so that you can access the small bind button. Grab a battery and get it ready to connect to the XT60 connector and do so whilst holding down the bind button. The receiver will show a solid green light when it's in bind mode. On the transmitter, now select the bind option and it'll start chirping. Almost immediately the solid green light will go out showing that the binding was successful. Disconnect the battery and turn off the transmitter, then power up the transmitter again and reconnect the battery to the quad and the light on the receiver should be solid green. Unfortunately, this budget receiver which comes with the Dark Max doesn't provide any telemetry information, so that's even more reason to replace it. Now let's take a look at Betaflight. So now we're in Betaflight, what we're going to do is set up the receiver and also the other settings that we need to get this thing flying. So I'm going to first of all plug it into my USB port. And you'll hear it start up. Now you don't need the battery connected for this setup. If you're using the FR Sky receiver, it's powered via the USB power supply, so that's good. And also remember, of course, don't have the props connected during setup or even after setup until you've tested the configuration and made sure that the motors are all spinning in the right direction and also stopping and starting when you expect them to. So I'm gonna click connect. First of all, the accelerometer looks nice and flat, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And I'm going to enable expert mode at the top right hand corner as well, just so we get some additional options. Now, looking at ports, the first thing that I found is that the UART1 is configured for the uh, receiver, but actually the receiver is on UART6. So when you've bound your receiver, you're not going to get anything working until you first of all toggle that option off and this one on. Then save and reboot. And once it restarts and we reconnect to it, then we'll be able to see the transmitter inputs. But until then, for some reason, it ships with UART1 enabled and your receiver will not work. Next thing I've toggled off is motor stop. So we'll set that to off so that we can use air mode. Under the speed controller configuration, it's set to DSHOT 600, but we have got support for 1200 and also ProShot 1000. But I'm gonna leave it on the factory setting for now. Not really gonna bother scrolling through the rest of these features, but everything is set as we need it to be. And so we're gonna to go to the next tab. Power and battery, we're gonna ignore for now. I've actually upped the cell voltage to 3.4 from 3.3, just to look after my batteries a little bit more. Failsafe is set to drop, which is great. It just means it's gonna cut the props and the quad will drop to the floor, which is better than the props spinning. So we're happy with that. PID tuning, everything looks fairly conservative. I'm gonna leave everything as it is out of the box and we may tweak these later on. Onto the receiver tab. Now, as I say, nothing was happening here initially until I switched the UART on the correct port. But what you will notice is that it comes set with a channel map of AETR. We need a Tyrannis one, so we're gonna set it to TAER, hit save, and now we've got all of our channels functioning as they should. Now you will notice that the channels are not balanced in the middle, our endpoints are wrong. And there is a guide that I've written on correcting those endpoint settings. You can click the link in the corner of the screen now to have a look at that guide. Next is modes, the important one. We're gonna add arm, we're gonna have angle, horizon, uh, anti-gravity, beeper, and air mode. <laughs> now we've got loads of other settings here. Flip over after crash is an interesting one. We'll experiment with that later, but for now, let's set up these. So the first thing we're gonna set is arm. So you can see the switch toggling up and down accordingly. So arm, we're gonna stick up here like that. Next, we've got angle mode, and I always configure angle mode just because we can. That switch is on aux two. There you go, you can see it's three different positions. So I'm gonna set horizon mode into the middle here as well like that. And then anti-gravity, I'm gonna be using in rate mode, which is my third setting up at the top here. So these three here are all gonna be driven by aux two. Next, we've got beeper, and I'm gonna set my beeper so that it starts beeping at the furthest extent of aux three, like that. And finally, air mode. And that again is gonna be driven by aux two. And I'm gonna save all of that now and the flight controller has accepted that. So if I now toggle my switches on and off, so first of all, arming, there we go. And then we've got our mode switch, which looks lovely. And finally, we've got our beeper, which works perfectly. 
Okay, so that's all set up. Next thing we need to do is look at the uh, OSD. Now we've got the on-screen display provided by Betaflight, which is lovely. We don't need the artificial horizons or the sidebars or any of that. We are going to add a few other things here, but we're probably not going to mess with it for now. So for now, I'm just going to save that, perhaps move this down into the corner, move that down into the corner as well like that. Hit save. And finally, LED strip. Of course, you can customize that as much as you wish. We're not going to mess around with that for now. We'll have a look at the CLI. If we type version, let's see what version of Betaflight is running. So obviously, we've got the Omnibus F4 in here, which is lovely. And it's running version 3.2.0 of Betaflight, which is a very recent version. So that's great to see. So that's a very quick fly through beta flight. We've not really changed much. We've simply configured it ready for flight. So that is exactly what we're going to do next. But due to bad weather, we have struggled to get the flight test filmed until just in the last few days. So look out folks, as it will be uploaded hopefully this weekend. Take a look at the Dark Max 220 via the links in the video description. Give this video a thumbs up and of course, click subscribe. Thanks very much for watching.